Hopestone Podcast. Coach Stone Podcast number 42. I want to thank everyone listening to the Coach Stone Podcast, JC Hawks Radio, JC Hawks Sports Network. BJ, thank you so much for letting me do this. Remember, if you ever miss an episode of any of my podcasts, you can listen to them on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, Google Play, look under JC Hawks Radio. Also, remember to go to my website for more information about my podcasts, blogs, books, football tips, and free PE games. Go to www.coachstonefootball.com. Also, I recommend when you go to my website, go to the bottom of my website for promo codes of all the products that I think would help you as a coach or a player, some you'll hear during the commercial breaks on this podcast. Remember, if you have not seen my books, Back to the Basics Football Drill Manuals, I highly recommend them. It is on Amazon.com, hardcover and Kindle. There are 15 currently football books out from tackle books, a flag book, one tackle bar book, a football clinic notebook, mom's edition book, a junior edition, over 2,900 pages of drills and content. Without further ado, I had to get this guest on, and he, and like, he is so great. I've talked to him now like 400 times because I've been begging them to get on here for, since I started this. I would like to introduce Mike Pollock, Director of Tip of the Spear. Mike, are you on? I am. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you so much, and I appreciate it. And when you see when you talk to Scott or see him next time, tell him I said thank you so much for coming on the show today. I, I will. They didn't have the greatest day today in Pittsburgh, so uh, I'm going to give them a couple of days before I give them a call. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I met him at a Glade Clinic. I know how that is. I remember when he asked people to come up, and, and he's like, you want to come up? And I'm like, I'm good. I saw your other videos before. I'm good. <laughs> I, right. I played quarterback, so I don't want no part of that stuff. You know what I mean? Smart guy. So uh, yep. let's do this, Mike. Uh, let's do just go run down. We're going to have a pregame. You're going to talk about yourself a little bit that people might not know about you. Give them your Twitter handle, of course, if they want to follow you or ask any questions. And then also we'll talk about your company, Tip of the Spear, and you get all that stuff too. Uh, we'll then go to commercial break. We'll then have a kickoff question, first drive question. We'll get some halftime in water, and you'll show me how to run the football better because I love running the football, even though I played quarterback. Kickoff return question, and then second drive question. And then after that, the two-minute warning. Okay, and then the game's over, and then we're all out of here. Are you ready to go? Sounds good. Let's do it. Perfect. Here we go. Pre-game. Tell us about yourself and just, like, touch base on, like, you know, your resume and then a little bit about tip of the spear because that's going to be the first, first question, okay? The floor is yours, Mike. Awesome. Yeah, so I played uh, – I grew up in Arizona, still live here today. Uh, played center at Arizona State, um, where Scott Peters um, played center as well, but kind of like a generation. I was in high school when he was a senior. Um, got to watch his senior class go to the, go on to the NFL. Four of the five starting linemen went to the NFL. It's kind of a big reason why I wanted to go to Arizona State. Um, so, but he mentored the center that mentored me, so there's a lot of – um, similarities kind of in our personalities, and I think that just kind of stems from that. Um, uh, had a, a really good career at Arizona State, went on. I was a second-round draft pick to the Indianapolis Colts, um, got to win a lot of games blocking for Peyton Manning, um, Played, went on to play with the Panthers and finished my career with the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, Seven-year NFL career, play a lot, learned a lot, a lot of great, I mean, Hall of Fame coaches, Hall of Fame players I was fortunate to play with. Um, then I got done with football and – um, I was kind of just burned out, you know, um, just consecutive seasons in, uh, of getting hit in the trenches just takes take its toll. And I was kind of ready to be done with football and go find something new to start my the, the next chapter of my life. And um, I, 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 I'm kind of scared to admit that when I left the game of football, I was like one of those players who said, you know what, I didn't really want my, play, my own children playing football just because of all the concussions I went through, the, the head, in, head injuries, the orthopedic surgeries I've had. And, um, and I knew – Towards the tail end of my career, I just keep in touch with Scott Peters, and he's like, hey, man, I, re I got something really cool I want to show you. 
um, and he had started this MMA gym, and I was never really big into the UFC or MMA at that time, so I was like, that's, that's weird. That's not really football-related. How is that going to help me <laughs> stay in the NFL longer? Um, but I eventually um, – cross paths with him, call it fate, if you will. I was uh, volunteering. I, I did a favor for uh, the co- the coach that was coaching at the high school that I went to. And then he's like, Hey man, I really love it. You can come help me coach my lineman. And I was like, sure. I, I'd love to just volunteer a couple hours a week. Um, Scott came in with his program, did a clinic for the coaches. And I was just kind of floored, blown away with this, this new way to approach contact and kind of fell in love with what he was teaching Um, but the time spent as a high school coach, I I did two years of it. Um, and I was offered a a head coaching position and I, I, it kind of reignited that passion for football. I knew I could play at a high level, did it for a long time, but now I was able to kind of take what I learned and pass it down to the next generation. And I got to a a big crossroad in my life going, you know what, I got to kind of either stick with this high school football or go into this unknown with Scott and, um, I, I kind of jumped into the deep water without first learning how to swim and just picked up a lot of skills all along the way and being able to take this program, whether it's at a youth level or all the way, we're at the Cowboys training camp a couple of years ago working with their O-line, and it's just been a, a special ride, and we're just growing, and it's just amazing to see. I mean, Scott Peters is coaching in the NFL because of the program he built. So we got a really cool thing here and looking forward to what the future holds. And here, here's what I say, Mike. We've only met like probably like like let's say a week, right? Not even a week, right? Sure. Here, here, here's what I would say. Okay, everyone listening, I'm a former quarterback. I played indoor football. I wasn't like you know fortunate with with getting drafted or nothing like that. I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't care what anybody says. The smartest guy in the field is a center, because he's got to make all those line calls. He's got to make sure everything's ready to go. And just by him saying him and Scott are line oh, oh, centers, that's pretty awesome. Because I'm going to tell you right now, and, Mike, you'll, you'll know this. I, I mean, you, have, you even dropped Peyton Manning. If it's not for all the things that you had to deal with, with all the changing, their calls, and I guarantee you, you heard the word Omaha at least one time, right? <laughs> so, That's right. <laughs> so what I'm trying to get at is, like, listen, when you listen to this podcast, think about this. I know the quarterback's like the leader of the field, but if it's not for those guys up front in those trenches, those offensive linemen, I'll tell you this right now, there is no way – I'd be doing a podcast and doing what I do with my stuff without those offensive linemen. So if you ever see an offensive lineman, make sure you thank them. Even like, so Mike, thank you so much for protecting us because it wasn't for you. I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, we do the dirty work, but you know what, when you get to that level, those guys behind you, they appreciate it and they, they take care of us. Don't you worry. Yeah. And here's the thing too. And I'm just going to draw this out. Hey, uh, Madden, listen, uh, I play KO, you know, for Jen Walter. I play that shutdown defense. But I love it that you can pick any player that they can be, right? You can even have NBA players, Mike. NBA players or musicians. Musicians would be like wide receivers and stuff and quarterbacks. But I've yet to see them add an offensive line player. So I am going to, when we do this podcast, I'm going to tag Madden and say, we need a KO player, like an offensive lineman, because we deserve offensive linemen pick not just these skill positions. Because, an offensive lineman is a skill position. So, Mike, do me a favor. Absolutely. Tell everybody your Twitter. Tell everybody Tip of the Spears, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff you guys got. Once you do that, we're going to go to commercial break, and then I'm going to start loading questions on you. Perfect. My Twitter is at Mike underscore Pollock, P-O-L-L-A-K. Um, tip of the Spear is at Tip of the Spear F-B. And then you can search us on YouTube and Facebook and all the other social medias. I'm kind of an old school guy. I got, we got to do the social media because it's the, just the sign of the times, but um, <laughs> you can, you can find us on that stuff. You can find our website too, osfb.com. You find a bunch of good stuff there too. Awesome. Perfect. Let's go to commercial break. When we come back, kickoff question. Are you ready, Mike? Let's do it. Perfect. Coach Stone podcast number 42, Mike Pollock. Director of Training for Tip of the Sphere. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Safe contact, sound fundamentals. Tackle bar football is a safer approach that preserves the tradition and fundamentals of the football game. What is tackle bar football? Tackle bar football is a safer approach to the game that preserves the tradition and spirit of the sport. Players wear traditional football equipment plus a tackle bar harness 
that holds two foam bars across the lower back. The defender must attract and engage with a proper arm tackling technique while wrapping the ball carrier and ripping a bar from the harness. With this approach, players stay on their feet rather than taking the ball carrier to the ground. Tackle bar. Coach Stone Podcast number 42. I got Coach Pollock, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear. Coach, here we go. Kickoff question. Tell everyone what is Tip of the Spear. The floor is yours, Coach. Thank you. So we're a group of former NFL players with a comprehensive skill development program that removes the helmet as the tool for contact. So as you know, like concerns over player safety have left these governing bodies scrambling to find ways to save football, but most of these solutions have been reactive, you know, from the yearly rule changes to limits on contact and practice. So when coaches hear the word safer, they often think it means softer versions of this game, but we at Tip of the Spear, we believe um, if you want to really improve player safety, we then as coaches, we must be proactive. It's not a reactive solution that's going to fix this. We have to be proactive. We have to better prepare our players for the most important skill in football, and that's contact, but yet it's the most underdeveloped. So Tip of the Spear, we teach coaches and players how to improve their performance on the field by becoming more competent and confident in their contact skills, and in doing so, our techniques have drastically reduced helmet impacts and concussions at every level. That is awesome. And then a little bit like correct. So tell us like a little thing, like a verbiage of something like you do. Like I know like some companies have like stance or this and that. Like what is your stuff? Like I believe you guys have pillars. Is that correct? Yeah. So we, so our, our hand fits kind of, we, as a player, we were all taught to use our hands and our face mask as like this triad or these three points of contact. Well, Instead, coaches have been trying to figure out how to eliminate the helmet and just use the hand. So we use what we call a bridge and a pillar. So a bridge would be an offensive fit or, or, or a hand um, contact, and then a pillar would be something that we use on the defensive side of the ball to create separation um, from a blocker. Nice. And here's where I do know this. Uh, if you're listening to this podcast, offensive linemen don't hold, just so you know, unless they're caught. So <laughs> unless unless the flag's out, it's not holding. Exactly. And even even then, even then, and that's the thing that we've we've faced is a lot of the things that we're teaching that referees mm-hmm. haven't seen before, um, and a lot of the stuff that we teach stems from like the MMA world where they do a lot of like push pull using their opponent's momentum, their force against themselves. So uh, sometimes you'll get a, a holding call, and you have to explain to the referee like, "Look, man, like th- that." We weren't restricting their body in any manner. We were using no. their momentum against them. Then they then they come to realize like, oh, that makes sense, and then, then they get better as well. That's hilarious. And, and you know, I, I'm thinking of this like when we when we first talked, and I I made that tweet uh, tweeter uh, post about you know I think you guys had like they had 300 yards rushing at the end of the third quarter against the Cowboys, the Browns, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, that's tip of the spear all the way, right? And then like. Then the Thursday night game when, when Khalil Mack threw the – I don't know if you saw that. We threw the Buccaneers lineman from there. I'm like, well, just so you know, if, if that was tip of the spear, that probably would not have happened. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so great. We'll go to commercial break, and we'll come right back with a first drive question. Does that sound good? Can't wait. Perfect. Mike Pollock, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear. We'll be right back at this commercial break. The safety of your players is more important than ever. As the game changes to protect the players, TechoTube USA is a leading way with the original innovative product design, not only to practice safer, but promote and teach the best tackling technique. Invented in 2009 by professional rugby player and coach Glenn Remnant, TackleTube allows the players to simulate real game situations, track and tackle a moving target, promote great body position, and improve technique, and timing. Coaches in the U.S. and all over the globe are using TackleTube to promote a safer and more effective way to tackle. Unlike other bags that have a limited use, there are many ways to use a tackle tube in your practice, both in season and out of the season. Drills for every position, tackle tube never needs to leave the practice field. Check us out at TackleTubeUSA.com or on our YouTube channel and all social media. Look for Tackle Tube USA. 
in business for 30 years. Collegiate Sports Data is the most reliable source of high school football prospect information. We are a free service for high schools and athletes. Our focus is getting the right players in front of the right colleges. www.collegiatesportsdata.com Coach Stone Podcast number 42. I'm on the phone with Mike Pollock, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear. Coach, here we go. I have to ask this question because I heard in the pregame, and I, I wrote it down, so I hope that's okay. You talk about, you know, taking that leap of faith, jumping into the sharky waters. So here's the question for you. Why did you join Scott in Tip of the Spear? The floor is yours, Coach. Um, I, yeah, I was just at that crossroads in my life where my next chapter was either leading me to become a high school football coach, head coach, which – as you know, a lot of times once you get that head coaching job, if you're in the right spot, you could be in there for a decade, maybe longer. I mean, I, the high school coach I played for was there for almost 20 years. So um, that that was an enticing offer. But then on the other hand, I had something that was completely new, foreign. There was no guarantees about it. Um, but there was just something ab- about the, what Scott created that, I, I could see I can see how it can affect the game of football for years to come, and, and hopefully one day be the gold standard of how coaches um, are, are really teaching contact skills in football. And I just I just I couldn't I couldn't shake that from my mind. And um, I I'm one I, I'm kind of an OCD type A personality where everything has to be a certain way and. Um, I, I, everything's very calculated. So for me to take this leap of faith was very outside my character. Um, mm-hmm. But I just, I just went back to like, I, I, I didn't want my boys going through what I went through. And I don't, Got it's it. not that I fault any of the coaches I played for because you don't know what you don't know. And that's what yeah. we found. That's what we found out every time we go to a, co- a college or when Scott taught the pillar to um, John Gruden, and we have all seen John Gruden get super red on Monday Night Football, but when he, when he first learned how to make this small adjustment to, to be more effective on defense, like he was blown away. And for a guy like that who's probably watched every piece of NFL game film in existence to learn something new, like we have something special here that just isn't, isn't out there. So um, I, I wanted to be along for the ride, and I, I think I, I added a, a key piece that Scott needed to help, help this thing take off and, and grow. Well, and, and it's growing to the day, you know. And you said it really like, like Scott. We couldn't get Scott on because he's with the, with the Browns right now. You guys have been with the Cowboys. You guys, like, now you get John Gruden, you know what I mean? Teams are yeah. seeing it, and teams are doing it. So, and I know you said, this is one thing that's funny, in the pregame you said about, you know, you're, now I don't know if you were shocked, I forgot, you know, but you said, oh, Scott came to train our coaches. So, like, when you first saw it, I know, like, I think you said it blew your mind away. But you know how some coaches are when they first see it? They're like, mm, you know, you know how it is, with, you know, with the yeah. products and things like that. So, like, explain to us, like, you know, with that stuff, like, because here's, here, you don't want to sell me on it, right? Because I, I met Scott, he's a great guy, you know, and just by seeing what he does and, you know, seeing those videos you guys post on Twitter and uh, social media, I mean, I, I love it, you know what I mean, for someone who likes to run the football every down. So explain to us, like, how did you feel like it was just like, you know, like when the light bulb went out, you know how you say it? When the light bulb went out. Yeah, yeah. Feel, so, like, I mean. That? I mean, when I first got into, like, the high school coaching, it was really about just me teaching what was taught to me, right? And I think that's mm-hmm. a lot of coaches out there. You're either teaching what you did as a player or what you saw as another coach that you want to emulate and you want to teach what they're teaching to your players. Um, so it, it's very cyclical. So when, this came, when, when Scott came by and was like, this is why it works, and, and that's, I think, the biggest thing that, coaches are, are are overwhelmed with the level of detail that we bring, but everything that we say or everything that we teach has a why behind it. Whereas as a player, I think back and I really just got a lot of dad adages as far as the do it this way. Cause I said so. And that's, that's where they, the coaching or the instruction stopped. And it wasn't, it wasn't just good enough to like, okay, you can demo it coach, but like why? And, and Scott says, from a biomechanical standpoint, I can tell you why this is superior to what you're doing before. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, we worked um, a couple of years ago 
um, with a, a semi-pro team that um, the old Packers coach Mike Sherman was coaching at, and he was a huge, huge fan of teaching offensive linemen to lead step, you know, take a, a, a forward step at your opponent r- right off the snap. He wanted to, you know, like drive, take those driving steps to go attack and punish the defender, Where whereas – a lot of what we teach stems from hip-driven power. So one of the things that when we work with college or pro athletes or even high school, we ask them to say, hey, how many of you guys can bench press more than you can squat? And if your strength program is w- worth a grain of salt, then that should be zero, right? Everyone's squat should be larger than their bench press. And that's not because Correct. they do it more. It's because the mechanics of our body make it that way where we can generate more power with the, our hips. But everything that we teach um, – or have taught stems from a a pushing philosophy. And so we want to get away from pushing people on the football field and instead incorporating our hips. So as players, we're in the weight room doing things like the the squat, hang clean, and coaches are talking about hip explosion. But when we go out to the practice field, there's there's no connection from the weight room to the field. And so we rely on all these pushing. And so what, what's really funny is, um, or interesting is when you use your hips correctly for power on the football field, your head is actually drawn away. It's not you're pulling your head back, but when your hips, when your hips come through, your head is pulled away. If your head goes forward, your hips go away. So it's very easy for coaches to see whether or not their players are using uh, their hips well enough because you can see, is your head getting closer to your block or is it coming away from the block? And, but, we, but we utilize all of these resources, whether it's sleds or we're pushing trucks, that everything is based on this pushing on this horizontal plane, whereas what we teach is we want our hips to drive our hands. We want the hands to be the conduit of all of the hip-driven power. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, that's awesome. And, like, I think we talked about that. You said it earlier. I said something. I think it was you, though. When I remember when I was a player as a quarterback, right, they were always telling the offense, like, do that triangle. And it was you that said it earlier. Now yeah. it's like, well, all that was, like, really not right. You know what I mean? Even yeah. though, like, we're well, well now, now you have lots of coaches who, who taught that little three points of contact with the hands and the face mask. Well, now, now their, their instruction goes, okay, well, just take your head out of it. And there's still mecha- mechanical flaws that you're not pushing. So one of the things that we teach um, in our blocking philosophy is we want the elbows inside the framework of the body, inside the torso. So, like, from rear view, you shouldn't be able to see your elbows because if the elbows are inside the frame of your body, when you go to explode or what we call uncoil the hips, all that energy from your hips is transferred through your elbow, through your forearm, into your hands, into your opponent. Well, if I have my elbows outside of that framework, all that hip explosion is lost because there's no connection point. Awesome. And so all I'm left with is relying on smaller muscle groups of my pecs, my, my mm-hmm. triceps, and my, my shoulders. And so we're, we're able to show coaches and players this is why it works. This isn't just us going, oh, we played at the NFL level. We know better than you. It's no. If we, every NFL player that we work with now, like they have this light bulb that goes on and go, why, have, <laughs> why has no one taught me this before? Why am I just now learning this? <laughs> I'm sorry. That's awesome. That is awesome. And, and here's the thing. You know this because you've been in the NFL, right? There are some NFL guys that are great in FBI, but then when they get out of it, it's like they're, they, they're not as sharp as they were. Is that wrong by saying that, or am I correct by saying that? No, no. I mean, that, that's 100% true. And, and a lot of it stems from just the, the kind of all of the dog and pony shows that players are put into them. And I played with some guys who could go compete in a world strongman competition, just hands down stronger than you, bigger than you, mm-hmm. but they were awful at football because they couldn't move. They couldn't adjust on the fly. If things weren't perfect, they didn't know how to respond. And mm-hmm. so this, this bigger, faster, stronger mentality that's kind of overwhelmed the sport has kind of um, allowed I mean, one of the things that we talk about is l- let's refocus our mind as coaches on developing skills, not attributes. Like we want, we want, we want to make sure we have strong players. I'm not saying that or, or not fast players, but what are the skills? It's easy to measure how, how much stronger you got in the off season at your bench press, your squat, your 40 yard dash time. But did you get better at blocking? Did you get better Correct. at feeding? But did you get better at contact skills or how do you judge that? And so we have a whole skill development program that not only um, you can use during the season, but it's year-round. And as a lineman, the only thing I did in the off season, 
season was get bigger and stronger, you know, like eat more, lift more, run more. But, I mean, in high school, I played other sports. I played baseball. Scott and I both played baseball. In the offseason in baseball, we're, we're in the batting cage working on how to hit a curveball, like, you know, developing different skills. But in football, coaches would just tell us, oh, we can't, we're not getting better at football unless the pads are on. Well, it just seems ridiculous because contact, you know, blocking, defeating, blocking, all that stuff is, is just uh, body mechanics, muscle memory that you, you have to learn over and over and over again. It has nothing to do with your helmet or your shoulder pads. That's just – to help alleviate the bumps and bruises. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, we've, we've been advocating forever for high schools to allow shoulder pads with no helmets in the springtime, not so guys can pound each other, but so guys can get familiar and confident with the, the faculties of their opponent that they'll see come Friday, Saturday, Sundays um, in the fall, instead of using these hand shields that are wider, they don't, they don't impact the same, so when we work with our, our guys, whether that's on a private level or when we go work where we can, we, we're in shoulder pads with no helmets because we want to reinforce good mechanics and do it in a right way where we're, we're using our, our, we call it weaponry, like the shoulder pads, you know. So, I mean, Scott created this from the MMA world and jiu-jitsu where they use geese mm-hmm. and you can grab and you can manipulate your opponent based on what you're holding. Well, we can do that on the football field, but in the practice realm, we can't. So there's that disconnect. So your, 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 your governing bodies are telling you as coaches, they're kind of handcuffing you and limiting the development that you could be having. So within the realms of the rules that currently exist, we have drills that progress based on mastery. So it's not just, okay, you've got to do this today. Well, what's the purpose? Everything that we do has a direct correlation to uh, an objective or an assignment that you need to do come game day. It's not we're doing – um, up downs like uh, you can throw up downs out the window like there's more efficient more optimal ways um, to work and practice than doing things that you're not going to do uh, under the game conditions awesome hey and I don't mean to like add a question to this right but I wanted to ask this the one thing I saw when I met Scott were those like it's like little handcuffs right well, can you tell yeah. us about that I know you guys sell them right I, like, yeah, you know, so me, the, when I was taught, I used a tennis ball, right? But when I saw your guys' product, I was like, ooh, this is pretty cool. So do me a favor. Like, one, tell us what it's called, right? Tell us how much they are, if they, like, you know, how much they can get them for for one or whatever. They can buy a set. And then, like, explain, like, what they're all for. Is that, is that okay? Yeah. So they're called a, a, a lev cuff or a leverage cuff. And, I mean, as a player, I had – so many offensive line coaches tell me, like, we want tight hands, tight hands, tight hands. Well, you can have tight hands, and your elbows can still be outside of the frame of the body. So, again, going back to what we previously talked about of having that connection point between the hips and the hands, you need the elbows inside the frame of your body. And so within um, our the past five years of kind of working this, a couple of years ago, Scott realized, like, as we're developing players to become more confident and explosive with their hips, they're forgetting about keeping the elbows inside the frame of the body. So we created this product mm-hmm. called the Lev Cub. You can find on our website, TOSFB.com. I think they're like 39 bucks. We, we have like uh, specials that go a couple times a year. There's a coach's pack on there. That's a set of five for a, a, a reduced rate. Um, but the whole premise is that we want our elbows tight. And so that we, we call them training wheels for our program because you put them on in the off season, the spring time, get players used to having their elbows inside, we incorporate it into the weight room, um, and then you get out on the field and, and, and they feel natural to have their elbows out. We, we've gotten a, we've, we're trying to get players away from the old um, stereotypical football-ready position where you think about squeezing your shoulder blades back and having, like, wide hands, like you're, we call it drawing, like, six guns, like an old Western you're trying to draw from the hip. Um, mm-hmm. But – All that does is just expose a bigger surface area for your opponent. We like to play with our hands out in front of the body um, in a pre-contact situation. Obviously, both sides of the ball have different objectives, assignments, whatnot. But prior to contact, we can align our bodies in a more optimal position, and the leverage cuff is just a a, kind of a means to help you learn that as you kind of uh, progress through this program. Okay, and, and, like, how do they put them on? Like, I mean, I've never seen them, right? I mean, I've seen them in person, but, like, how do they – are they Velcro or what are they like? 
Yeah, so they're a Velcro, and they go right uh, above the elbow, like right at the base of the bicep. And then they connect um, together, and usually you have uh, – w- once you get skilled, you can do them by yourself, but usually starting out, you you have, like, a partner do it. And a lot of the, the drills that we incorporate are partner drills. So you unclip them, the, you help your buddy get into them, he, he does his rep, you unclip him, he clips you together, and then you kind of switch back and forth. So it, it, it's pretty easy, and, and they've be, they're starting to become pretty popular at the college ranks. We're, we're getting a lot of – inventory sent all over the country that's awesome and i apologize for asking i mean i remember seeing those and i remember he put them on and so like he put them on like they were nothing right and then he had yeah. a, a guy try to put them on he's like oh wait let me help you to that coach <laughs> yeah like, it, it, it's, it's just an them, awkward right? it's just an awkward yeah. thing because there there hasn't been something like this before and so it was really great that scott created them and um again the idea is like it, it, it's to help keep the elbows inside the frame of the body so you have that connection point when you explode with the hips all the energy transfers through the elbow your elbow basically serves as like a buttress for all of that force to go through your hand through your opponent yeah there that's awesome and all right let's let's do this we gotta go to halftime fair i get you on a dry race board because i want to run jet sweep this year more because we only ran it 74 times i want to run it 95 times so let's there let's we go do <laughs> let's go let's go to commercial break i mean we'll go to halftime We'll come back, and then I got a kickoff return question for you. That this will be awesome because I can't wait to hear it. Okay, nice, perfect. Coach Stone podcast number forty-two. Mike Pollock is here, director of training for Tip of the Spear. We'll be right back after halftime. What legacy will you leave as a coach? The three-dimensional coaching framework empowers coaches at every level to fulfill their transformational purpose by helping them become fundamentally sound, skilled at coaching the mind, and focused on developing the heart. Are you needing to take courses to meet professional development or recertification requirements? If so, check out the different online 3D coaching course offerings at 3dinstitute.com. You can even take the 3D coaching course for three graduate credits. Make sure you use the coupon Unite All to save 10% on your entire cart. That's Unite All, no spaces, all one word, at 3dinstitute.com. The Big Four, a physical education book written by Coach Anthony Stone, can be purchased through the following locations Amazon, iTunes, BarnesandNoble.com, and Kobo. Go Army Edge Football is a free game changing app that allows coaches to draw their plays with X's and O's like on a whiteboard and then get the mental reps from the first person's perspective of any position on the field with real-time 3D graphics or virtual reality. Go Army Edge football comes preloaded with many example plays and drills for concepts such as formation recognition and RPO reads. Any coach in any system can benefit from demonstrating in Go Army Edge football, and every player can become a better football player with extra reps in the app. Go visit them on their Twitter or Facebook, insert at Go Army Edge. Brunch. Thirty dollars. Hey, that's okay, Wendy. That was a good carry. You're still the man. You're the man. Latte. Ah. Four dollars. Shake it off, Johnny. Rub some dirt on it. New piano. Three thousand dollars. All right, guys. They're not saying boo. They're saying movers. Supporting your team. Price list. Sorry, Bobby. You still got the best arm in the neighborhood. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's Mastercard. This is decaf, right? Watch Game Film, the simple and affordable way to watch, exchange, and manage game film. Watch Game Film has been around for 10 years and works with all sports and all levels of play. Subscriptions start at $100 per team and include unlimited film. www.watchgamefilm.com Back from halftime, Coach Stone Podcast number 42, Mike Pollock is on, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear. Okay, Coach, here we go. I, I the thing in the, at halftime, I'm going to say this right now. First place, we're going to be jet sweep left, right, for me. But here we go. <laughs> Kickoff return question. How did the program get started? I know you were talking about how Scott had the MMA stuff and things like that, and you guys, he was a senior at the college, and you were, like, you were coming in.
but tell us how this whole program got started. The floor is yours. Go. Yeah, so Scott Peters, all the credit goes to him. Um, when he was towards the end of his um, career playing with the Cardinals, he played seven years, a bunch of teams, Eagles, Giants, Panthers. Um, but he was when he was back here in Arizona with the Cardinals, he was rehabbing an uh, injury where he had to be, kind of be non-weight-bearing for a little bit. He um, kind of was recommended to go do some jujitsu, And so he, got, he went to this jujitsu gym and, um, again, coming from this world of bigger, faster, stronger, Scott being this big offensive lineman, um, thinking like, dude, I could totally whoop these smaller guys. But he gets into this realm that's just completely foreign to him, and guys twice his age and half of his size were just quickly just dominating him. And just it, it, it was frustrating at first because, I mean, he's still thinking I'm in my athletic prime. You know, I can bench over 600 pounds, but why am I getting beat by these guys who – wouldn't, wouldn't even make it out on an NFL practice, like a practice squad player. And so he, he, he was frustrated early on, but really became a student of jiu-jitsu and, and took this learning of this new craft to heart and, and kind of quickly, I, I think Scott was a two-time world champion grappler. I mean, just he, he took to it, he learned it real fast, but then he realized that there was some correlation that he could use, the, uh, a way to kind of evolve these techniques the way that they're using their body for leverage and use it on the football field. So kind of uh, on a whim, he put together this um, basic skill development program where he went up to the University of Washington where his former uh, O-line coach at Arizona State was coaching um, in 2013 and spent two weeks teaching this to the coaches, teaching it to the players, working with the players. Um, The Huskies went on to set – like school records and and rushing yards points scored. I think they were number two in the nation in sacks. Um, But so from a performance standpoint, it was great. But about a month after the season, Scott got a call from their athletic trainer who said, you know what? I don't know if you know this Scott, but we didn't have a single concussion the entire season. They were doing some helmet study with USC and all these other Mm -hmm. big time programs. And as a former D one player, like zero concussions in a football season, like that's just unheard of. And the coaches credited a lot of their success for of how violent their play, their linemen were playing with their hands to the techniques that they learned. Um, but he knew at that moment he had created something special. He knew that by creating a better performing player who was more confident in their contact skills, well, then player safety would then become the byproduct. So our motto is safety through superior technique. And so Scott created this uh, – company called safe football and that was like the the beginning to uh, tip of the spear and so we operated a safe football kind of teaching the stuff for a few years and then in 2017 um the the giant nonprofit pr arm of the nfl usa football came a knocking and they they wanted to kind of figure out what we were doing i mean we we're growing at, at a really fast pace and um we ended up partnering with them for a little bit doing some content with them um, but they, they had some concerns about calling football safe from a legal perspective. So, I mean, we got that. So we, we, we had this other name, Tip of the Spear, was kind of our private training. We'd do some private online, mm-hmm. or if we'd go work with the NFL team, we kind of went under the guy's Tip of the Spear. Um, just it, it's, the, it's a, a, a general term for, like, the first and most meaningful point in an, offens- in, in an offensive um, but when we teach it, it, it refers to a specific point of our hand. So in our palm opposite of our thumb, there's a bone called the lunate bone. So when we say we're making hand contact, we're really making contact with that specific point of the hand, the, the lunate bone, which is what we've deemed the tip of the spear. That's awesome. I mean, I, that's, that's pretty cool how that all came about and stuff like that because I, I didn't know you guys were called safe football first, and then he just took that to the, the thing and then, why is, like I have a question. Why is it called tip of the spear? Is there a reason? Like is it like a like the logo is it with the arrow, or what is it? Yeah, so um, it, it's kind of like a military saying. You know, like the tip of the spear is like the the first point in an offensive, first and most meaningful point in, in an offensive. But we're using the tip of the spear when we strike with our hands. We're not hitting with our whole hands. We're not hitting with our fingers. We're hitting with a specific point of our palm, the lunate mm-hmm. bone, which is opposite of our thumb. So it, it's kind of a meaningful, um, like, I don't know, it, it's an aggressive term because that's what we want to be when we're playing football. We're not trying to make football softer. 
by making it safer. We're trying to make football players better and more confident. And in doing so, they're going to be in better postures to protect themselves. And really, we're, we're putting player safety into the hands of the players. Well, that, and that's awesome because the next question is going to be the question everyone's going to want to ask. So let's do this. Let's go to commercial break, and then we get the second drive question that I guarantee everybody wants to hear, okay? Perfect. Perfect. Okay, Coach Stone Podcast number 42, Mike Pollock, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear. We'll be right back at this commercial break. Do you preach about ball security? Is getting better each day something you strive to do? Do you want to work to eliminate fumbles? The high and tight teaching football is a revolutionary design football that encompasses virtually every method known to eliminate fumbling, thus maximizing your opportunity to be victorious. The high and tight teaching and training football is state-of-the-art patent football that gives athletes and those around instant audible feedback when you are holding the football correctly, high and tight, thus closing the gap between the wrist and the body and the elbow and the body. Whether you're a player utilize the wing tee carrying with two hands over the ball or a pro style against their body, high and tight provides an audible alert when proper hold is executed correctly. Start to create habits that win games with teaching your players how to carry the ball high and tight. Order yours today at highandtight.com. Use promo code COACHSTONE to save. Coach Stone Podcast number 42, Mike Pollock's on the line, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear. Here we go, Coach. Second drive question. Here we go, Coach. One that everyone wants to know. What resources does Tip of the Spear provide? The floor is yours, Coach. Go. Awesome. So Tip of the Spear provides, I mean, we're most well-known for our in-person clinics and camps for numerous position and scheme-specific topics. As well as on our website, we have three video libraries full of instructional content and drills. Um, We have equipment. We talked about the left cuff um, that can help expedite skill development all season long. And we we just launched a a digital certification um, for for coaches who are are wanting to take our our program themselves or the in-person route isn't um, an option for for their program. but we're trying to make our, our information as accessible to all at every level as much as we can. Um, we even last year piloted a flag football program. Um, one of the high school, high school districts here in Arizona, um, they, they, I know states like Texas has middle school tackle football, but here in Arizona they have flag football. And um, this one district athletic director, Marcus Williams was telling us that we, he was sending more ambulances to their junior high flag football than they were for um, their high school tackle football. Jeez. And to me, I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense until I went and looked at this nine on nine flag football that had three linemen on each side. And it was just a, a big, it, it was just a big mess. And so we were able to create a program that, takes the principles that we teach for contact a step down and instill some kind of principles for, I mean, the the biggest issue at that level and even in early high school youth football is players inability to control their body in space. So our, our flag program is really geared to getting better at controlling your body in space so you can have a a really good time playing flag football so when you graduate to tackle football at some point like most kids do um they've already got a good foundation for the the contact concepts of tip of the spear that's awesome you know that's that's phenomenal and so if anybody so coach do me a favor if anybody wants to go with the resources or anything give us the website they can go to to sign up for any of this stuff yeah so Coaches or players, we, you can go to our website, tosfb.com or tipofthespearfootball.com, and you can check out our resources. Um, we're still offering a, uh, our video libraries for free 30-day trial. Um, with this pandemic going on, we've been doing a lot of virtual clinics as well. Uh, but this is a way that if you're not quite sure, like, hey, this may be new, or I, I want to check it out, but I don't know yet, 30 days, you go in, watch all the videos you want, 
um, cancel within 30 days, get all your money back. But we do add new drills, and um, we film the clinics that we go to, and we upload some of them throughout the year. So if you do decide to stay on as a subscriber to our video library, um, you're going to receive new content to help upgrade your team. There's ways to connect with us. We're always using our social media um, to collect new ideas for new videos or new concepts that coaches out there want to see. I know um, I've been filming this um, center snap um, video series that coaches are all trying to figure out, well, what's the best way to, to snap a ball? And um, one of the things as a coach, like um, the more tools that you have in your toolbox, the better off you'll be. Like I played for lots of coaches who said, we do it this way, this way only. Well, you're going to, you're going to have some resistance at some, at some point in your coaching career. The more answers you have for your players, um, the more consistent and successful you'll be. That's awesome. And, and like, like here, here's what he's telling you right here. Center snap is one of the most important things. And I've seen it, and you've probably seen this too, Mike. I've seen youth teams anywhere from five-year-olds all the way up to middle school. They're snapping that ball over their heads every time. And it's like, listen, just go under center. You know what I mean? Like everyone wants to run the next big thing, you know. When LSU threw for like yeah. 600 yards or whatever. I'm not LSU. When Mississippi State went through for like 800 yards or whatever. Everybody was like, boom, let's all get this kind of certification or whatever. And then, like, then all of a sudden, then, you know, they haven't done much. I mean, they're still doing good, but, like, they haven't did the same output they did since week one or week two. So I totally get that. That's awesome. So Yeah, and one of the cool things – one of the cool things that we do, I mean, being from the MMA world, um, Coach, I don't know how much UFC that you watch, but when those guys get ready Love for it. a fight, they don't spend, they don't spend a lot of time um, in, the, in the ring or the octagon sparring with an opponent, but instead to get ready for that fight, they, they, they understand the, the, the skills that they need, and so they go and they train their groundwork. They go, they train their grappling. They go and train their submissions. They go and train their striking. And then they go into the ring and they test to see what they're proficient at, what areas are they still needing some work on. Then they go back and drill. So that's the exact same way that our approach to teaching football uh, contact skills. And so I, I think it's very different than what's out there. So for coaches that are kind of on the fence, like what to do, like this is the fastest – this is the, the best way to get your players operating at 100%. I know there's a lot of high school programs, youth programs that have reduced seasons this year, limited time. Um, it, 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 it's not something that you have to start January 1st and expect by fall. Like this is stuff like you can implement now within your season to, to get better, to dominate your opponent. That's awesome. Uh, hey, sold, right? That's what I would say to you. <laughs> so, Coach, let's do this. Two-minute warning. Okay, that's where you just, your words of wisdom. You have two minutes, so the floor is yours. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I kind of look at this. I, I've had the, the kind of the fortunate, I've been blessed to, to be able to play at a high level and to be able to coach, you know, at the same time. So as a player, I mean, I always, I always was drawn to not necessarily like the, the, these fancy things. I'm not, a, I'm not impressed by the fancy things, but just being coachable. Like I, I've had really good coaches and I've had awful coaches, but every single coach I've been able to learn something from uh, something that I've been able to add to my toolbox. You know what, th this is what I want to do in this situation, or I'm never going to use this again. Cause I know it doesn't work for me. Um, mm -hmm. But as a coach, what I'm seeing today is um, there's so much emphasis on winning and just Sometimes it's hard as a coach to understand it and take a step back and go, you know what, that's a kid. That's a kid at some level, and it, takes, it can take a 1,000 coaches to get a kid from the, the playgrounds to the NFL. It could take one coach to ruin his experience for the rest of his life. And so if we really want That's to great. stop this attrition and this, this sport, I mean, football has been bleeding out from a participation standpoint. Um, we have to make the game fun. We have to make practice fun. We, there's ways to compete. Competition is fun. So if you're doing, if everything you do is directly related to the game day, then it's going to be a competitive environment. And the more competition you have, the more fun it is. But you've got to know that as hard as you're going to grind them, you've got to be able to love those guys too because at the end of the day, whenever the season's done, at some point football ends for all of those players, whether it's, the end, mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, some injury, the end of high school, the end of college, or they have a great NFL career. Football ends for us all. But what we all want to happen is we want our kids, 
we, we, we want – yesterday or, or and today I've been watching football with my son. He's, he loves football. So I, I – you know what? He's going to have a lot of failures. I have to stay positive with him. And so uh, for the coaches out there who may be the screamer, may be the yeller, like there's a, there's a time and a place. But football is a game, and if, if you make it fun for that kid, if he finishes this, the year and he goes, you know what? I mean, I, I, I've been to the Super Bowl. I've been on a 2-14 and 14 losing team. At the end of the mm-hmm. year, I can still go, you know what? That was a fun season. I enjoyed football. And so that's going to continue, and that's going to keep growing our sport. You know, and that's a, that's a very good point. And I love your words of wisdom because the one thing I preach in my book is you're, if, if you're not having fun doing it, then that kid might be there for a year that you were all this time to recruit. He won't be there next year. You know, and and with every everyone says like I I've heard my one Hall of Fame uh, coach that I know that's probably gonna be in the Hall of Fame that coached me, not coached me. He was on I was on his staff. He said to us, he says you coach your players, how you coach your players is how you treat your wife and kids. So if you're a yeller and things like that, that's how you're treating your wife and kids. And you know what? He's a hundred percent right. I believe. You know, and, and Man, the, the, I, I can't tell you the you number know, of clinics we've been at where I've seen. I've seen that. You know, I've seen the coach just grilling his son on the football field. And I'm like, man, what does he do to his son at home? Yeah. And so, you know what, like, we all have different backgrounds. We all have different adversity that we face in life. But we, it, football's a game. It's got to be fun. Losing isn't fun. Losing is not fun. But you know what? In those moments of losing are the best opportunities to learn and grow. And so we have, mm-hmm. we have to, as coaches, be those leaders out there to understand, to swallow the pride, swallow your ego, and go, you know what, this is a learning. I have to treat this loss as a learning environment. Well, hey, listen, I'm sold on this, so thank you. And, I mean, so do this, do this for me, Coach. Tell us, every, like, tell us again, like, you know, the website, Twitter, your Twitter, so people can follow you, and maybe if they need to ask questions about anything about Tip of the Spear, they can contact you because I know Scott's busy with the Browns. And I believe they're in like second place right now in, in the conference. I mean, they're doing great. I don't care if they're maybe I'm wrong, but they're doing a lot better than they were last year, you know. And that yeah, you know, I I, I was talking to Scott the other day, and I mean, they've just been super impressed with how Bill Callahan is the 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 O line coach and Scott the assistant, just how well that they've been able to take these guys that were supposed to be one of the weak points of their team and turned mm-hmm. it into one of their strengths. And last week, I think it was, um, NFL.com ran a story of like 10, the top 10 um, NFL MVP candidates. Obviously, Russell Wilson's number one, well-deserved. Of course. But in that, number 10 was uh, Wyatt Teller, their right guard. I can't tell you another time that I've ever seen an offensive lineman or let, let alone an interior three offensive lineman exactly. mentioned in an MVP conversation. So obviously an offensive lineman is not going to win the MVP of the NFL. I get that. But just to be mentioned is a huge testament to what huge. Scott and Bill have been able to do to that program. And, I mean, I, we don't want to take away – even Scott, if he was on, he would say, you know what, the, the credit goes to those guys who are working. It goes oh, to course. Bill, who's been doing it forever. But just to see the, these principles that we've been teaching for so long have an immediate impact at the NFL level is just a huge testament to this program. And, and here's the thing, too. And, like, like I'm, not, I'm not contracted by you guys or you didn't hire me for nothing. Right? But here's the thing. Bill Callahan, he's a Hall of Fame coach. I don't care what anybody says, right? Yeah. And he's, he's a guru, Okay. When someone like him opens his toolbox to something like Scott's tip of the spear stuff, that just says a lot for, for anyone listening. That's a lot because you and Mike, me and you are probably the same way. If someone's telling me how to throw the ball differently than I teach all my quarterbacks, I'm probably not going to listen to them. Just like with your, your snapping series, you have it down packed so well, it's, it's fine tuned, right? So by, by him, by Bill letting Scott in to like help out, that just, that's lease and bound. That says a lot. If that makes sense. Yeah, and I know, I mean, the, the, it's a funny story. Like, Scott and Bill have had a good relationship, I mean, ever since Scott started doing this. Um, but he was originally supposed to just go out there for two weeks, kind of like what he did when he first started with, at the University of Washington, go out there for two weeks, work with the offensive line, work with Bill. Uh, but the new head coach, he went out there and presented kind of like, here's my plan to teach your guys. And their new coach, um, Stefanski, was just blown away by the, the, this proposal, this level of detail. 
and he just hired him on the spot. He was like, I need you on my staff. So, again, it's just a testament to what Scott built with this program. Um, I, I mean, it's just we're, we're happy to carry the torch. Um, Scott will be involved when he can, but obviously his priorities lie with the NFL and the Browns. Um, but we're just super excited to, to go forward and hopefully have a, a semi-normal year next year that – once things calm down a little bit uh, from the pandemic standpoint, we can get back to doing all the things that we all love. Yeah. And that's, it's phenomenal. And, and here's the thing too, they're not that old. That's the thing people don't understand. They're, they're a young offensive line. So that's, I mean, it's phenomenal. Coach, do me a favor. Tell us again, like the website and uh, you know, if they want to reach you again, and then we'll close this shop up tonight. Sounds good. Yeah. So the website's TOSFB.com, tip of the spear football.com. You can reach us on Twitter at tip of the spear FB. My Twitter handle is at Mike underscore Pollock. That's P O L L A K. Again, search us on YouTube, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, but please contact me, um, Mike at POSFB.com. If you have any direct questions, um, th- this is what we do. We're, we're former NFL players trying to help grow this game and make it sustainable. I know Scott a long time ago said, if we can save the brain, we can save the game. And, and that's what we're doing um, on a grassroots level. Just we keep snowballing forward and gaining more momentum. And we appreciate your support, Coach. Well, thank you. So, hey, listen, thank you so much for coming on the show, and I appreciate it. So, Coach, game's over, you know. So let's do this. Coach Stone podcast number 42. I want to thank Coach Mike. Pollock, Director of Training for Tip of the Spear, for coming on. Coach, thank you again. You know, I want to thank JC Hawks Radio, JC Sports Network, BJ, thanks for letting me do this. Remember, if you ever miss an episode of any of my podcasts, you can listen to it on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, Google Play. Just look under JC Hawks Radio. Also, remember to go to my website for more information about my podcast, blog, book, football tips, and free P games, go to www.coachstonefootball.com. Also, I recommend when you go to my website, go to the bottom of my website for promo codes of all the products that I think that would help you as a coach or a player, and you'll hear them during the commercial breaks too on this podcast. Remember, if you haven't seen my Back to the Basics football drill manuals, I highly recommend them. They're on Amazon.com, hardcover, and Kindle. There are currently... 15 football books out. They range from tackle book, one flag book, one tackle bar book, football clinic notebook, mom edition books, DYI books, and a junior edition. Over 2,900 of pages of football drills and content. Remember this. Always remember instilling confidence by laying a foundation. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Coach Stone Podcast 42. Coach Stone Podcast. Coach Stone Podcast.